Manchester has played an enormous part in the history of gay rights in this country, as was illustrated by a performance piece which crossed a number of days under the banner of LGBT History Month. A very Victorian scandal told the story of a raid of a fancy dress ball hosted for gay and transvestite men in 1880 and concluded with a recreation of the subsequent trial, an event seen by many as the UK's Stonewall. We were given exclusive access to film the dress rehearsal. I haven't felt warm from my bones since the ball. If you allow me, I'll get some warmth into you. They had me sleep on that ice cold stone and nothing but this. I beg for warmer clothes. I have faith that this charade will not be allowed to continue. I'm playing Edward Whitehead and he's the breadwinner for his family and his family rarely depends on him and he's a man who works with his hands. He, he's quite a um, blokey character but at the same time he's um, homosexual. So um, he's never really had the chance to express that way of life in his day-to-day -day routine because he looks after his family all the time. He's on trial because he attended a ball which um, he was invited there by a character called Arthur Gorton and he's always been interested in that sort of way of life but he's never really had the chance to express himself so he brings his mate Cora along and he plans to have a good time there but obviously it doesn't go too well. He attended the um, party originally because he's a singer, but the um, ongoing joke in the party is he never really gets the chance to sing. It might be because I can't sing myself. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, it keeps getting built up that he, he's going to sing and um, impress Gorton and impress the ball, but he never really gets the chance to. So I feel like the, me character at the time of the party, he'd be quite overwhelmed about how happy he is in like just being able to be himself for once. There's um, quite a lot of references um, throughout the trial about how embarrassed he is in regards to how his family is going to be looked at now because um, Edward Whitehead's quite, he, he's quite um, passionate about his family name and he doesn't want any sort of um, bad press going towards his name and I think he keeps thinking about how it's going to affect his family more than himself. I'm quite satisfied as to your taste in the matter, Mr. Cobbett. Uh, in the raid, I've uh, got the pleasure of playing Arthur Shawcross, who's the MC for the Victorian musical. And for anyone who's old enough, like I am, to remember the BBC's good old days, it's a uh, it's, uh, sort of um, uh, Leonard Sachs type um, character. Um, so I introduced the acts with strings of alliteration which uh, as an actor are driving me around the twist at the moment but um, it'll be all right on the night the other role is uh, the magistrate ch rickards in the, the trial scene where they want to um they want to send a message out they want to get some of these men in jail but they don't want to charge them with a specific offense because it will only offend the moral sensibilities of the time. Mr. Cobbett, you open the case for the prosecution. Your Worship, the offences with which I propose to charge these persons with is that the whole of them solicited and incited each other to immorality. So they, they decide really to um, uh, get these men charged under a conspiracy without actually naming what they conspire to do. I also propose to charge them with conspiring together to assemble at a certain place and there solicit and incite each other to commit improper actions. These were just men, uh, members of the public who had a perversion or behaved perversely. They weren't labelled, they, they um, they didn't have a, a particular badge to wear. These balls went on uh, not infrequently. This particular raid was down to the fact that uh, the uh, man in charge of the police at the time was, uh, I think, partly wanted to make a name of himself. He, yes, he did want to clear the streets of what he thought was a, a horrendous vice, but he also wanted to make a name for himself. So the combination is there. 
I went into a passage at the back of the temperance hall and scrambled onto the roof of the house. From there I could see into a large room. This large room? That is correct. I could see a number of the occupants, dressed as both men and women. I could hear female voices and near constant squealing. Female Christian names were also in use. Um, but uh, the last line of uh, the trial, without giving anything away at all, is the balls continued. I co-wrote the pieces with Stephen, Hor Stephen M. Hornby, um, and together we produced the show as a whole as well. Uh, and also I play a cameo as a, uh, as a policeman. Uh, well, me and Stephen uh, heard about the story a few years ago about the Hume fancy dress ball raid. Um, and we thought it was fascinating. We thought the images of, of kind of drag queens and, and, and people uh, being arrested and, and, uh, and the courtroom scene uh, was just really interesting. So we wanted to explore it and find out more about it and hopefully do something for the stage. Um, our historical advisor is Jeff Evans, who is, uh, works with LGBT History Month. Um, so yeah, so we used his research and his, his support to write the play. And we did our own research of the time period and, and everything, because uh, I quite like to know kind of the, you know, a lot of detail about the characters. So, you know, how, where they would have lived, how, you know, what they had for breakfast and so on. So, uh, so I kind of like to go into that detail. If you deny people a history, you deny them an identity. And for me as a gay person, um, when I was 18, 17, 17, 18, I didn't, I didn't know much about LGBT history um, and I didn't really have any gay icons or idols to look up to, so you know it's quite isolating. And I think educating people about LGBT history to show people that this actually happened and, and it's not a new thing, homosexuality is not a new thing, it's been happening throughout the ages. And the more we tell people about that, hopefully it will help people to you know, have an identity and to know they belong in the world and, you know, they always have done. These are just four of the 47 stories from the fancy dress ball raid of 1880. The other 43 remain untold. The balls, however, continued. <laughs>